OpenAI just introduced AgentKit, a complete set of tools for developers and enterprises to build, deploy, and optimize agents. This is cool, fairly exciting announcement. Developers can now design workflows visually, embed agentic UIs faster. Now, I don't really care about this product. I'm not sure I'll end up using it, really. But what I am kind of interested in is how they're talking about agents. Because if we look at this, this is not an agent to me. We have here a set of deterministic steps. We start, then we enter a jailbreak break guardrail, which by the way, just filters for malicious inputs, I assume. Then we have another LLM call here, which just routes the input to one of three separate agents. This to me is not an agent builder. This is a workflow. I thought we as a kind of AI engineering TypeScripty community had landed on some definitions for what agents were and what workflows were. But it turns out, no, we didn't because OpenAI seems to have a different definition from the one that we've been using. I want to talk through this debate so that you understand what agents agents are, what workflows are, and why the distinction even matters. And the best place to start is with Anthropic's famous article, Building Effective Agents. This came out in December last year, and it basically codified what an agent was and what a workflow was. This is how Anthropic defines an agent. It's essentially a loop. We'll talk more about what this loop is in a minute and what makes this agentic. But if we zoom up to a workflow example here, we can see a very similar example to what OpenAI just put out. Instead of a loop here, we have a directional flow. We have predetermined code paths. And this is what Anthropic calls a workflow. And it's kind of funny too that this famous article really talking about, you know, titled Building Effective Agents actually talks through like six different kinds of workflows. Let's go to TL Draw where we've got a bit of dark mode where we can actually dive into some of these concepts. An agent is a loop where the LLM decides when to stop. That loop is essentially multiple LLM calls one after the other. Now, if you call an LLM multiple times with the same information, it's not going to do anything useful. And so to make this an agent, you kind of need to give it new information each time. The way that works with the LLM calls tools, it basically says execute this piece of code for me and then tell me what happened when that piece of code ran. Just to dive into this for a minute, it kind of looks like this. Let's imagine our system has access to a tool called write file where it can write files to the file system. The user can say to the agent, write a new file called gitignore. Then the assistant comes back with a message here saying, okay, call this tool with this content and this path. On our local machine, then we execute the tool and we send the result back to the LLM. And so this flow becomes a loop where the LLM is gaining more information each time. This beautiful loop is what drives things like Claude code, coding agents, all the stuff that you're kind of used to using. The key thing then is that the agent then decides when it's had enough. So the agent can either continue to call tools or it can say stop, at which point it will emit a special token that just says stop. And we can catch that in the front end and no longer call the LLM again and again. Workflows are, of course, much easier to define. There's no loop here. It's just predetermined steps one after another. You take one LLM call, you pass its result to another LLM call, and you pass that result to another LLM call. You might have some deterministic logic in these steps, like if the LLM call returns one thing, do one thing. If it returns another, do another. But all of those code paths are known ahead of time and written in code. Workflows are neat, by the way, because you get opportunities to optimize the system. For instance, you can have parallel workflows where you have multiple LLM calls at the same time. We might take in or produce a chunk of text, split it into two parts, get the LLM to summarize each part of it, and then pass the results of those to another LLM call where we summarize the summaries. Because the path to the solution is known up front, we can optimize it in all sorts of ways, which make workflows really, really powerful. And by the way, if I had to pick between agents and workflows, like one that I could take to a desert island, I would probably pick workflows. But that's just me because I'm a natural contrarian. So let's sum up then. Agent and workflow, what are the differences? What are they good at? Well, the first thing to say that to qualify in this category, you need multiple LLM calls. Like a single LLM call all by itself doesn't really qualify as either an agent or a workflow. It's just a freaking API call. We don't need an extra definition for that. To me, the key difference is who decides when to stop the program. With an agent, as we saw, it is the LLM, really. The LLM can say, okay, I've done the work, let's now stop. Whereas in a workflow, it is predetermined steps that are known up front. Now, the reason that this entire distinction matters is that agents and workflows are good for different things. An agent is really good when the path to the solution is unclear or when you need to be able to generalize it to lots and lots of different tasks. Coding assistants are a really, really, really good example of this because the coding assistant in Claw Code or Cursor doesn't know what kind of code base it's going to go into. It doesn't know what kind of bug you're going to throw at it. And so it needs to be able to adapt on the fly. In other words, agents are really, really good at improvising. But workflows are much better when the path to the solution is known up front. When you need to do the same thing a thousand times, 
systems, you always want a workflow because as we saw with the parallelizable steps, you can basically optimize it in all sorts of different ways. Whereas an agent, you really leave the optimization up to the agent itself. Agent is like jazz, you know, it's all improvisation, all feel. And workflows are like classical music where you can spend ages optimizing the upfront setup so that the final output is as good as it can be. The next thing to say though, is that agents and workflows are a spectrum, not a hard definition. Most systems out there you will see will be somewhere on this gradient between agent and workflow. For instance, a pure agent where the LLM is solely in charge of deciding when to stop. Well, I don't want to deploy that because that thing is going to eventually run forever. And so most agents have a max steps counter. In other words, a deterministic stop in the code to prevent the agent running infinitely. This is so common that tools like the AISDK actually have a max steps parameter to their agents. Going further down, we have agents that contain workflows. Many agents are able to call workflows from within tools, which by the way, allows you to build really, really smart systems because you get the generalizability of the agent and then you're able to optimize the tools that that agent has. Finally, of course, you can have workflows that contain loops. This might be that you produce some text and you evaluate it multiple times to refine the output continuously. The difference here, of course, is does the LLM itself have the ability to break the loop early? For me, that's a sign that it's an agent rather than a workflow. But these terms are on a spectrum and most systems out there will use some combination of each or have like agents within workflows or workflows within agents. And so the definitions are useful because they allow you to think about problems in terms of patterns. And so it kind of hurts me a little bit when I see as agent workflows grow more complex. Ah, what did we do to deserve this? This is just so confusing. Now, of course, I'm annoyed, I suppose, because I'm interested in agents versus workflows as a like a pedagogical tool, as a teaching tool, because I do find the definitions useful for communicating what you're trying to build and the trade-offs between them. But also there's a sense that everyone's using the word without there necessarily being a good definition behind it. I only hope that this definition will spread, that the anthropic definition of just tool calls in a loop will be what people land on. Now, if you're digging what I'm putting out, then you will love AIHero.dev. I'm gonna be releasing something soon, which is going to mash together AI and TypeScript and give you the ability to ship really powerful AI applications with the language that you know and you know that I love. Thanks so much for joining along, folks. I will see you very soon.